Hi, I'm James Worrell from the Department of Emergency Medicine at the University of Ottawa, and this video is going to give you a brief introduction to ultrasound physics. So you're about to attend a point-of-care ultrasound course, and the first thing they're going to do is send you off to sleep with a half-hour lecture on physics, right? Wrong. Everything you need to know about ultrasound physics you can learn in the next few minutes by watching this video. What are ultrasound waves? They're sound waves. And sound waves are mechanical waves that are an oscillation of pressure transmitted through a medium. If I clap my hands, I compress the air molecules between my palms, whereas the other nearby molecules move farther away from each other, which is called rarefaction. That wave of pressure moves through the air towards you, the listener. And in your ear, it causes a mechanical movement of your eardrum. Ultrasound is just like the sound we can hear, but the frequency is higher. You may remember that frequency is the number of oscillations per minute. Here's what a wave looks like. For any given speed, higher frequency waves have shorter wavelengths and vice versa. The speed of the wave depends on the medium it's traveling through. For instance, you may know that the speed of sound is greater in water than in air. An ultrasound transducer is both the source of the sound and the listening device. It makes a pulse sound wave and then it listens for the echo. It does this using something called the piezoelectric effect. There are these little crystals in the transducer, which, when subjected to an electric current, vibrate and generate the ultrasound wave. Then, when the echo returns, they deform and that produces a current which can be measured. So when the wave hits a reflective surface, the ultrasound machine will detect the intensity of the echo and the time it took for the echo to return. So it will gain information about the medium the wave is traveling through and also the distance. Of course, the sound energy of the wave is reduced as it passes through matter. That's called attenuation. Naturally, some of the wave energy is simply lost as the wave passes through tissue, which is called absorption. And in general, different tissues will have different attenuation. Now, if the tissue is particularly dense or high attenuating, the ultrasound wave will not be able to penetrate it. Therefore, the machine will get no echoes from deeper tissue. We'll get something called an acoustic shadow behind the dense structure. A classic example of this is bone. Here we see an image of someone's aorta and IVC near field to their vertebral body. Notice that the bone of the vertebral body appears like a bright white line with shadows behind it. Here's another nice example of acoustic shadowing. This is the gallbladder, and within it are gallstones. Gallstones are dense. They attenuate the ultrasound image, causing acoustic shadowing behind them. So we have seen how an artifact, acoustic shadowing, can be useful diagnostically. There are a couple more artifacts I want to explain to you. To understand refraction, think of what happens when you put a stick in the water of a pond. As it enters the water, the stick appears to bend. The light is refracted. Something similar happens with ultrasound waves. This is an image of an abdominal aortic aneurysm. You notice that there are shadows here, which we call edge artifact. This is called, caused by refraction of the ultrasound wave. Another artifact is acoustic enhancement. When ultrasound waves penetrate a fluid-filled structure, the sound waves will be enhanced posteriorly. The echoes look whiter, which is illustrated in this image of the bladder. The area deep to the bladder looks white. This is also why we like to use fluid-filled structures such as the bladder as an acoustic window for our examination. One artifact we don't like is called scatter. Gas is our worst enemy. It creates scattering and we can't get any echoes from the tissue deep to the gas. Here's a nice image of gas scatter. There's gas in the intestine and we get what we call dirty shadows behind it and we can't really see anything. So we've learned how the properties of the tissue determine how far we can see into the body. This is also affected by the power of the wave produced by the ultrasound probe. You can think of this like the amplitude of the waveform. 
but we can't really control this. It's set by the machine. What we can control is the frequency of the wave, because different types of probes operate at different frequencies. Therefore, you have to understand the relationship among penetration, frequency, and resolution. In this picture, on the left, you see low frequency waves, which are penetrating deeply into tissue. Think about your neighbor who plays his stereo too loud. What do you hear the most? The bass. That's because the low frequency sound waves penetrate into your apartment. Higher frequency waves do not penetrate as deeply, but they have a shorter wavelength. And that means they have better resolution or the ability to distinguish one structure from another. So penetration decreases with frequency, but resolution increases. Now, one thing we often see with ultrasound beginners is when they're struggling with not enough penetration, they try to turn up the gain on the ultrasound machine. This just makes everything look whiter, but it doesn't change penetration. Basically, the machine is just turning up the volume knob on the echoes it's getting. It's not getting a better echo. Now that you've got some basic concepts down, you should be able to understand how ultrasound can be used in a clinical context. So go check out some other videos. Thanks.